All right, let's let's talk about the Reynolds transport theorem. It's actually one of the coolest things in fluid mechanics. Uh, let's let's say we had a river, or not a river, any any fluid, any anything, any fluid. Oops, and it was flowing. Okay, time was going, it was flowing. Okay, this fluid was flowing, and we we snapped our fingers and said, okay, time stop. Okay, so this fluid that was originally flowing is just stopped, stopped in time. And we think to ourselves, okay, let's draw an imaginary boundary and study, to study um, a certain uh, uh, a volume of fluid, okay? We'll call this boundary the control volume, okay? And we want to study the mass that's in here, right? The mass of the fluid that's contained inside this control volume, this orange circle. It's in our head, okay? And this body that's in this black body that's contained inside this control volume is usually denoted um, the body that's contained inside the control volume, okay? So that. B is just the body of mass, that black, all that black, okay? And so the fluid still stopped, okay? And we say, we unsnap our fingers, and now the fluid's moving. And we let it move for a certain time, okay? We let it move. And after a certain change in time, after a couple seconds or something, we stop the fluid again. Okay? Okay, and it stopped. Okay? And that boundary, boundary still there, still in the same position, still just there, chilling. But when we moved, when we said, okay, fluid, you can you can keep moving. And it did. And that that black body actually moved, right? The control volume didn't move, right? It's just an imaginary boundary. We see, we see what goes in, what goes out of that boundary, okay? But when we said, okay, let's let the fluid flow for a certain time and then stop it again, and let's see where this black body is now. Well, the fluid was flowing this way, right? So the black body moved a little bit this way. Now in that control volume, there's actually a couple things going on. Um, this right here, actually I'll, I'll do this in the, in the thicker purple. This right here, all this mass, right? This mass left the control volume after a change in time, but in order for the mass in the control volume to stay constant, there is another piece of mass that came into the control volume. Okay? And and those two masses are equal, right? Whatever goes out must come in. Okay? And then you also have, you know, this mass here. The stuff that's still remaining. The old stuff that's still remaining inside the control volume. Right? So, well, we have the mass that went out, we have the mass that went in, and we have the mass that's still remaining. Okay? And we can model this as, or we can, let's, let's try to figure out an equation for this. We can say that the mass of the body that's contained inside the control volume is equal to the mass of the control volume plus all or the sum of all the mass that's flowing out all this minus all of the or the sum of the mass that's flowing right the squiggly line means flowing in and and this is true right because whatever mass goes out the stuff that comes in must be, if, if this was equal to zero, that means 
the fluid wasn't moving. There's nothing going out, there's nothing coming in. That means the body that's contained inside the control volume is going to be always equal to the mass that's contained inside the control volume. They're always going to be equal. And the mass of the body that's contained inside the control volume. Okay, so this mass, this mass, the mass that was here, this black mass, we said, okay, let's let's let the fluid flow, and it 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 flowed, and it, it and it went and it went and it went and it went, and it moved a certain distance, right? That same black mass moved this way. So we're we're always studying that same piece of mass here, right? That black mass that we saw moving is the mass of the body. It's the body mass that's contained inside the control volume. It's that that black is the body, right? It it moved, and if we're studying something that's always moving, this is this is actually a constant, right? It we're just studying that same amount of mass. Think of it as um, you you stop the fluid here, and everything in this control volume, you you put a little bit of color or dye in it and and dyed it like black maybe you know, and you let the fluid flow and you saw that same black mass moving. Now the mass that mass that black mass never changes; it's, it's always constant, right? And the mass inside the control volume, the mass inside the control volume, well the control volume isn't expanding or shrinking. So the mass, regardless of what goes out, what goes in, the mass inside the orange circle is always going to be the same. So that's also going to be equal to a constant in a steady flow, meaning no time dependent variable t. And, and the mass that goes out and the mass that goes in, well that actually does change with time, right? If you let time go on, um, different amounts of mass will be going in, uh, different amounts of mass will be coming in. So that that doesn't depend on, uh, that that actually, not, not depend, but it doesn't, um, it's not constant. It's not constant. Now if we took the rate of change, or we took the derivative of all this, right? we see, and, and the, uh, all the derivative means is that we have time, we, we, we let the fluid flow consistently, okay? So if we took the rate of change of this formula, well, we said this was a constant, so the derivative of that in respect to time is zero, another constant, that's zero. All we're left with is the mass flow rate of the stuff that's going out minus the mass, all of the mass flow rate that's coming in uh, is equal to, looks like zero, right? And the mass flow rate um, is actually equal to uh, rho, rho q right? Because mass flowing per unit of time, um, if we were in SI units, if we said the mass, mass in SI is kilograms, right? Or standard SI units. And if we said, if we took the rate of change of that in respect to time, meaning how much mass is flowing during a certain time, well that, that's kilogram, that's mass per uh, time. That's mass per time. That's kilograms per second. And that's equal to rho. Well, rho is mass divided by volume. And we we know Q is equal to um, volume uh, meters cubed per time. So it's volume per second. It's the, it's the volumetric flow rate. And we see that the meter cube cancels out and we're left with kilograms per second. So mass flow rate, the rate of change of the different types of masses that are coming in, um, um, and and the and the mass that's coming or the mass that's coming out that's leaving the control volume minus the mass flow rates 
coming in must be equal to zero. So if we solve, if we uh, change this equation a little bit more, we can say that the sum of the mass flow rate leaving the control volume is equal to the and uh, equal to the mass flow rate coming um, into the control volume. That makes sense, right? Because if the control volume is in changing shape, we can say the stuff that goes out must be equal to the stuff that comes in during time, right? And if this is true, we can say rho q that goes out must be equal to rho q that goes in. And remember our q is equal to rho v a, right? Velocity times area of the stuff that goes out must be equal to uh, the stuff that comes in, right? And let's say let's say the fluid was um, it didn't change density. So if we didn't change density, well we can we can cancel that out, cancel that out, and we're left with v a is equal to v a. So the sum of all the q that goes out is equal to is equal to the sum of all the q that goes in. Right, simple. In by the end of the day, all this means is that if we saw this imaginary boundary, uh, the stuff that goes out must be replaced by other stuff coming in. Okay, and that's the Reynolds transport theorem, and it'll make sense if we go through some examples. So we'll do that in the next couple of videos.